Thank you, Robert. As Robert said, my name is Leanne Chuboff, and I am the Senior Technical Director at SQF. What I get often is three questions. I get, who is GFSI? What do they stand for? What do they do? What is third-party accredited certification? Um, what's the difference between that and just a regular uh, third-party audit? And how does SQF and GFSI work together? So through this discussion, I'm going to share with you the answers to these frequently asked questions that we get at SQF. So first off, who is GFSI or the Global Food Safety Initiative? So GFSI's in main goal is to build confidence in third-party certification. The goal overall is to improve the efficiency of the food safety system and food safety along the supply chain. Their aim really is once certified, accepted everywhere. That's GFSI. So we're gonna talk more about what GFSI is. GFSI is run under the parent organization of the Consumer Goods Forum. So the Consumer Goods Forum is a organization with 400 members comprising of retailers and manufacturers, three headquarters in 70 different countries. So Washington, D.C., Paris, and Tokyo. So Consumer Goods is that umbrella organization over the Global Food Safety Initiative. GFSI is a collaborative approach. So you listening are a stakeholder. The certification body, you may represent a scheme owner, you may represent an accreditation body or a supplier, food service entity, whatever it might be, you are a stakeholder. So your input and feedback into GFSI is what makes GFSI work. That's the global approach. So it's looking at the food safety and technology experts around the globe and providing input and feedback into this process. So GFSI, of course, has a governance structure. There's a board that has a uh, chair and a vice chair. The chair is um, Shank Gorel with Aon, the vice chairs are Neil Marshall with Coca-Cola and Mike Roback with Cargill. And with that, the stakeholders have direct input into the board and into how the technical working groups are formed. So using these technical working groups, this is how priorities are established. These are how, how the GFSI builds their uh, documentation and builds their program. So stakeholder input feeds into the GFSI program, into the board, and then technical working groups are formed. So there's a variety of different technical working groups that GFSI forms. The one I'm going to focus on is the guidance document working group because that's what GFSI is really focused on as it relates to third-party certification. So the guidance document you may hear is a multi-stakeholder document. And what that means is that the feedback that we get from the Global Food Safety Initiative stakeholder groups, those food safety, those technology experts, feed into the guidance document that, that uh, outlines what the scheme owners, or SQF, have to include in their code. So the guidance document is a term that's used loosely. Typically, what we would say is a requirements document, because it's not a nice to have, but it's a shall have. So the guidance document is developed by this stakeholder group, and it sets out those requirements for food safety management schemes, or what SQF has to include, for those key elements, those technical requirements, as well as those scheme requirements. So the technical requirements for each industry scope. So an industry scope is what would we, we would include uh, growing of produce, or growing of animals, or um, processing or packaging or distribution. Those are those key technical elements that need to be included in every scheme. So the guidance document includes that, such as sanitation or such as allergen management or traceability, management commitment, those key technical requirements. The guidance document also includes in there what the scheme owners need to do. So for SQF, we need to demonstrate how we have management commitment and build continuous improvement and um, outline what, what our complaints and appeals process is. So that's also included in the guidance document. So the guidance document is this requirements document that outlines those um, technical elements 
that SQF has to include in their code. And that's what the guidance document has. And it's, it's built off of stakeholder input from the Global Food Safety Initiative stakeholder group comprising of food safety and technology experts. This is a, a slide that demonstrates what are the different industry scopes. So you can see GFSI has bucketed the industry and there's different requirements for feed, different requirements for farming of animals versus farming of plants and produce versus processing versus distribution versus uh, food packaging. So there are those different technical requirements. For example, farming of, uh, of plants would focus on water management and soil amendments while processing you know, is focusing on allergen requirements and focusing on, um, focusing on site requirements, those kinds of things. So there are different technical elements in each of these industry buckets and that's what the GFSI guidance document outlines. So how does GFSI work? GFSI, what they do is they benchmark the food safety schemes using that guidance document. So the guidance document that's developed, um, SQF or other scheme owners, they develop a code based off of that guidance document and then submit that code to GFSI to um, ensure that they meet those requirements outlined in the guidance document. And that's what benchmarking means. It means that the code has been benchmarked to that guidance document. So GFSI determines whether a scheme is equivalent to that guidance document, but GFSI also helps encourages that stakeholder feedback and group. So that's done either through the technical working groups or through their annual conference. What GFSI does not do is they do not write food safety standards. They're not in, in the business to make policy for retailers or standard owners. They don't conduct any audits or accreditation. Um, and they Okay, start on this slide. So what GFSI does not do is they don't write food safety schemes or standards. They don't make policy for retailers or standard owners. Um, they're not in the business to be a certification body or an accreditation body. And they don't include any areas outside of food safety. So animal welfare, ethical sourcing, quality, that is all outside the scope of GFSI. So the second question is, what is third-party accredited certification? So before I answer that question, I want to talk about what we currently do. Currently, we have a system of, you know, not currently, but previously, we had a system where suppliers um, look to a certification body to conduct an audit to a generic audit checklist. It might be created by the certification body. It might be created by the supplier. It might be created by uh, another a retail entity. But the C certification body or the CB audits the supplier to that generic checklist. So this is what we used to have for third-party audits. It was a, simply a system where we relied, just relied on everybody doing the right thing, everybody having the right um, checklist in place for food safety. What accredited certification does is uses a specific uh, checklist through SQF that's benchmarked by GFSI. So think about what we talked about when we were looking at those, that global stakeholder input. So the SQF program is based off of that global stakeholder input, and that's how our checklist is created. So it's the SQF system. It's that system that SQF has to have in place, not just as the technical requirements are, but also the scheme management requirements. And then that program is used, that checklist is used to um, audit against the supplier. So the certification body audits the supplier using the SQF checklist. Now the CBs though, there's more to it because the certification bodies are now audited, not just against the, um, not just using the SQF criteria, but also against an ISO guide, ISO guide 65 and ISO guide 17065. So these certification bodies now are audited or assessed by an accreditation body to ensure that they have the right practices in place. 
So that's conducted by an accreditation body. So an accreditation body audits the certification body, and that also includes not just a, a site assessment, but also a witness assessment of the auditor. So an, an assessor is auditing the SQF auditor. And then the accreditation bodies are also being audited, and that's by a sister review process by the International Accreditation Forum. So now we have a system of trust. We have a system of trust based off of internationally and globally approved documents, whether it's the SQF code and checklist and system or an ISO document through Guide 65 or 1765 for certification bodies or 17,011 when it comes to your accreditation body. But we have this system of trust where there's an auditor auditing the auditing body that audits the supplier. So CVs audit the supplier and issue a certificate. The accreditation body assesses the certification body and accredits the accreditation body. And then the International Accreditation Forum reviews each accreditation body. So this is the system of trust. Now we have a system of checks and balances that at each stage of the process, where each is independently reviewed and assessed, there is an opportunity for improvement. So notice that there is, that while the lines are connected, there isn't any conflict of interest because we each have our own independently reviewed process, whether it's SQF through GFSI, the CBs auditing the suppliers, the ABs auditing or assessing the CBs, and then the IAF reviewing the accreditation bodies. So this is our system of trust that we have in place. So the last question is, how does SQF and GFSI work together? So SQF and GFSI, we've been together since the, its inception in the year 2000. We are one of those four benchmark schemes along with BRC, IFS, and Dutch HACCP. And as you can tell, we continue to play this proactive role in GFSI. So the SQF program works that SQF licenses and has a license agreement with the accreditation body and the certification bodies. So the accreditation bodies accredit the certification bodies. Additionally, we have a license with our training center. The training centers are used to train SQF consultants and the SQF practitioners that work in the facility. We also train our auditors. We train and credential and register our SQF auditors as well as the consultants that work under the SQF program. So we don't hire these auditors, they work for the certification body, but we train and credential the auditors. Now the supplier implements and maintains the system, and then the certification body works with the SQF auditor to audit and issue the certificate. So there's a couple things that I wanted to emphasize. First is that SQF license, and we have license agreement with each of our accreditation body and our certification body, as well as the training center. And the second thing is that we register and train our auditors. That's independent from the certification body, and that avoids conflict of interest and also in, instills consistency and measures auditor competency. So we, the auditors must work for a certification body that has been credentialed and approved by SQF. So this is the program, and this is what a lot of entities call a scheme. So SQF is considered a scheme. This is the SQF program and how it's outlined. So what are we seeing? We are seeing trends in, in the supply chain. We see that North America is one of our most um, growing markets out there. So SQF is the leader in North America. We also have um, a presence in, and a market share in Canada, Australia, Japan, and Mexico, and that's where our primary markets are. But we are seeing significant growth over these years in how GFSI and SQF is being used. And we don't see, because, because this is a foundation that works, you can see the checks and balances that are in place and the opportunities that we have for improvement but there is opportunity for improvement in each of those areas. But this is a solid foundation, one that can be built upon and one that can be improved. So in the end, the question really is, isn't it better to do it once and do it well? You look at all the different buyers that are out there. If they agree on one standard, whether it's SQF or the GFSI benchmark, 
then they have a shared supplier base, the result, clarity, efficiency, lower cost because of their reduced number of audits, and ownership in food safety. So in the end, we're all in it together. We're all in it to build food safety along the supply chain. And with SQF and the partnership that we have with GFSI, we're on the right path to do just that. So there's a lot of different resources out there. I'll point out the two that are significant for this webinar or for this, uh, this talk, SQF, our website, sqfi.com, and our general contact information, info at sqfi.com. And then GFSI, their resource page, it has a lot of different information when it comes to the benchmarking and approval process. Um, they have a newsletter that you can sign up to, and then they have a general information, GFSI info at theconsumergoodsforum.com. So I appreciate your time today, and I wish you all a great day. Thank you.